Welcome. In this short video, I'll take you through the menus that are available in the Minim OSD display, um, actually accessible through just using the transmitter sticks. And there's a number of things that you can do. Some of them are for setup and some of them are for tuning. What we're actually looking at here uh, is the firmware that we looked at in one of my other videos, which is available from the web address on the screen, which is HTTPS code.google.com slash p slash multiwi hyphen osd and this is my favorite at the moment i'm really uh, like this firmware it's very easy to set up it's easy to use and it gives a very uncluttered crisp display when you're flying so this is the one that we've got on the minimum osd board that we're looking at here it's going to um, pop it on a machine and we'll actually fire it up and then what i'll do is i'll actually take you through each of the menus give you an idea what's available step by step and also in the lower corner i'll actually pop a video of what i'm doing with the transmitter sticks so that it's clear about what you do with which piece and then finally at the end what i'll do is talk about the on-screen display itself and point out a few of the key features. It'll take about 10 minutes to run through this, so thanks for bearing with it and watching. If you haven't already watched my setup videos for the Minion OSD, then I'd recommend that you spend a bit of time looking at um, these two or three videos. They kind of tell you everything you need to know to set it up to run on a standard multi Wii without editing any of the code on that board, just using the signals that are already sent out the side of it that um, can drive the on-screen display. So without any more ado, let's go over to the bench. I'll fire up the camera pointing at the transmitter and start to record the on-screen display and take you through the menus. So here we are, we're looking at the on-screen display and uh, it's disarmed at the moment. Uh, here's my transmitter and what we'll do first of all is to get into the menu system. It's very straightforward. You put the throttle stick at mid position right rudder and full pitch and that will then take you into the menu and here we are first menu is all around the PID configuration this is exactly the same non clementure as the GUI so it's not um, 2 point it's not 23 it's 2.3 for the D setting on things like roll and pitch and um, if you need to change anything at the field you can do it here and to move around the menus you can use the right stick to go up, down, left and right and if any value you want to change you'd use the left stick but we're not going to change anything in here we'll just go down and look at the other pages I'd suggest that you know this is great if you're out the field and you forgot your computer but I find it actually slightly easier to use the PC. So we don't want to exit. We don't want to save and exit. Let's just go back into the menu, bear with me. There we go. Um, let's go to the next page. Next one is RC tuning. Um, this is where you can set up how much exponential roll rates and other bits and pieces to make the model more aggressive. This is pretty standard settings here. I haven't tweaked with these too much. But again, if you're in the field and find that the model is not flying as aggressively as you want or flying too aggressively, you can dial up and dial down these values. Next page here is one that you may have seen before. You've seen my other video, which talks about um, actually setting up a voltage divider. So here we are. So we have at the top, we have um, display main volts on. So that has it on the display and we'll look at that at the very end. The adjust volts number that's 211, that is just showing us the um, number that we had to put in so that the voltage in the top right hand corner was the same as the um, battery on the model. I'll show you two other things. Here we are, main voltage alarm set to 10.5 volts. So that's standard for a 3S LiPo. So as soon as it gets to 10.5 volts or below, the icon on the on-screen display will start flashing. Uh, I don't have the video volts displayed because on my models, I don't have a separate video battery. It all runs off the main flight battery. Uh, down here is the number of cells that then sets the graphic. There's a graphic in the bottom left hand corner which shows how full the battery is and that just shows um, tells the board which one to use whether three or four cell lipo. So that's whether or not you're getting the information from the multi-way and that again is to adjust those volts for the video. 
Okay, so now we've done that, let's go into the next page, which is all around RSSI. So this is where you can set up, if you have the RSI, RSSI cable connected to one of the pins on the Minim OSD, then here's where you'd set it. So you can set it to display at the top, and then you can also do go through a little sequence to actually uh, define the minimum and maximum position and save those at the top so that it shows you in uh, between 0 and 100% in the OSD itself. Next page is the current. So what I'm doing here is because I don't have a current sensor hooked up, I'm actually using the virtual sensor. Now the virtual sensor is just reading the throttle position and making an intelligent guess of how much current is actually being pulled. Um, it's not bad actually, it's pretty, pretty good and if you find it's not quite accurate, you can actually adjust that value that it displays with the adjust amps. And what you can do is fly the model with a watt meter attached, have a look at what the number is, have a look at what it says in the on-screen display and adjust this number until the two match. And this final one here is adjust zero and that's so that you, um, when it starts up, the, the number that in the display is the right one. And my model sat just idling, pulls about 250 to 300 milliamps. So I changed this number until it was showing 0 0.3 amps. Go down to the bottom. Next page. And then finally, you have a couple of pages around the display. So we can just choose whether we want the horizon, the sidebars, scrolling bars, everything else on here. The things that I don't have on mine, I don't like the throttle being shown, I have a rough idea where that is from my hand itself. I uh, don't want the GPS coordinates on there, I find them off-putting, and um, I tend to use the return to home as the fail-safe anyway. If I was flying a long distance over open fields, I might turn that on, and at least I'd have a chance of finding the model from the last coordinates I could see in the display. Um, sensors are on gimbal and map mode. Now the gimbal is that horizontal line. Now map mode is an interesting one. This is one that you set in the um, in the code when you're actually writing to the board. And map mode is something that I have, and we'll look at that in a second when we go back to the main display. Map mode is where rather than having a standard heads up display where the middle of the heads up is the horizon and your direction you're looking, it actually shows one of two things. It shows either the home location in the center, marked with a H, with the copter around it, or it shows the copter in the middle and the home position rotates around. So you have a little graphical map of where home is in relation to you to help you fly back to it. I find that really, really useful because I can see at a glance in the heads-up display, whether the home is behind me or to the left or right or in front of me, and also in the top right-hand corner, there's also a distance display to tell me how far it is to get back there. So map mode is something that you can't um, change whether you have the model or the home in the center and the other one orbits around it, but you can turn it on and off from here. And then you can have some other bits and pieces in here. So here's that reference voltage, the 1.1 volts in here that we talked about in one of my other videos where we discussed the uh, voltage divider. This is where it's set. Uh, you can also, if you're having trouble with the magnetometer, you can do the calibration in the field, which is quite a nice feature. And then the other two are what the signal is going to be. I'm in the UK, so it's good old pal. And uh, again, because in the UK, I like miles. So um, it's an imperial system. So I'm just go back to the bottom. And hopefully you get an idea of what each of the sticks do here. So you can see the right one is moving around and the left one is actually changing things. So I think the last time, last couple then, GPS time, uh, you've got the display uh, for the GPS time to show you what time it is. And I wouldn't really worry about that, to be honest. You can change the time zone. Um, when I'm flying, the last thing I want to think about is time, apart from how long I've been in the air. And then you have the statistics, which is the maximum distance, travel, maximum altitude, speed, and other bits and bobs. And then you're back to PID config. So that hopefully is useful for the, those of you who are interested in this. Let's just 
jump out of it. So here's my on-screen display. So at the top left-hand corner, you can see that the multi we can see five um, satellites for GPS. We can, so we've got a lock. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner, there's the battery voltage, the 11.7 volts. And again, because we have set it up to 3S, you can see it's showing that it's kind of three quarters full. You have a little mile per hour in the left middle side of the display so I can see my speed and because I've got it set to Imperial it's going to be miles an hour which is good and then in the top right hand corner that is the distance to home arrow showing me the distance to home and the amount of distance there is and then you've got at the bottom in the middle the amperage so the 0.3 amps I'm pulling and the 56 milliamp hours that I've pulled since I powered the craft on and then the top um, in the middle is the compass so as I move the model you should see that move around and then in the bottom right hand corner is the amount of time that the system's been powered on. Last thing I'll talk about then is in the very middle. In the very middle you can see that there's a H at the centre of the artificial horizon. So let me just move that so you can see the artificial horizon move. The H is the home. So the way this works is that as I fly the craft around, I have mine set so that the craft always stays in the middle and that H will wander around the screen to show me which direction home is for when I need to fly back. So... Hopefully that's interesting for you and uh, that helps explain the settings that are available through the on-screen display for this firmware version. If you have any comments or questions, then let me know. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Happy flying.